everybody, it's your pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, bringing you Monday Minutes. What a fantastic day. I've had some great consults with people, and it's really interesting because this gives me new ideas for content to share with the rest of you. Let's face it, a bunch of you are putting together shows for 4th of July. A lot of you are getting ready for... Halloween, and of course, some of you are building those really big shows for Christmas. Are you going to be on the Great Christmas Light Fight? And uh, there's a good number of you that are pretty new to X Lights, and maybe this is your first year putting on a show, whether it's for Halloween or Christmas. And my goodness, bless your hearts if you're actually uh, putting on a Fourth of July show, it being your first year. And hats off for you to, for just going after it. But I want to give you some tools that I think are underestimated in x lights And we take things for granted. And you're going to be surprised just who can benefit the most from these tools. And believe it or not, it's not, not always the first year folks. It's people that have been doing this year over year. And they don't keep up with the new tool sets that are introduced in x lights uh, there are some people that uh, maybe took a year off or two or three and they're coming back and they've forgotten a lot of stuff or they simply are expanding their shows like crazy and uh, they need a little more help. So uh, this week I want to focus on a couple of tools that I think are very, very helpful uh, for your shows in the building process. Next week, we're going to talk about some things that will help you out with the expansion of your shows as it pertains to models. I wanted to do that this week, but I think this is more important. Let's get into this. I have my big old giant layout here. Yes, this is my home. This is what my show looks like when it plays every year. And this is what I put my sequences on that actually go into the store that I sell. Great. Maybe your show's bigger. Maybe it's not as big. Doesn't matter. Because when it comes to putting models and controllers into your show and trying to figure out what port did I put what on, it can get very confusing. And maybe you're grabbing screenshots of your show and writing notes or using some type of AirPad, iPad, whatever. It, it's just, it can be confusing. So let's try to make it less confusing. In our tools, so pay attention, please. This is this is really important. In the tools, as it says, there are tools in here. There is the test. There's the check sequence. Uh, folks, you need to be running check sequence on your stuff all the time. It's always going to tell you where there is an issue. Now, it's a double-edged sword because sometimes it's going to tell you a bunch of crap that nobody cares about, and neither should you. And that's a long, long video that maybe we could remake. But the reality is when you see errors, that's probably important. When you see warnings, ugh, know what it means, but don't panic. It's probably not a big deal. Cleanup file locations, we've talked about that. We're gonna go into that. Uh, the batch render, that's an important one. We'll do another one on that, FPP Connect, later, later, later. Bulk controller upload, that's a beautiful thing. The run scripts, I'm going to do a very specific separate video on this because it's pretty cool stuff. The export models is the first one that comes to mind that I think is important. So I'm going to click on this. It's not intuitive. It, it sort of sounds like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to export models. That's not what you're doing. They need to change the name of this. This is silly. Export models to the desktop. Sure. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to minimize this window and let's just go take a look. What is this exports model? Well, because I have Excel, it's going to use uh, Excel. Now there are a lot of free applications out there uh, on Windows and Mac. So if you don't have Excel and you don't want to pay for the whole Microsoft thing, I don't blame you. That's fine. I happen to have it because I need it for business purposes, right? On this list, it's going to give you a head spinning amount of information. Everything from the model name to displays as the string types. Maybe you have some strip in there that run BGR or something else like that. String counts, no counts, light counts. An attempted best guesstimate to what your average might be. Don't, don't make this the holy gospel here. I'm telling you, get yourself in trouble. 
Uh, channels, channel count, start channels. I mean, as you can see here, thank goodness we can get rid of a bunch of the stuff we don't need. What do we need to know? Well, here's my universe information. I mean, I guess that could be good. Uh, I'm more interested in what's what's on these ports. What the heck is going on? But this this is what sort of drives me crazy about this. I mean, this is like just a ton of information. And yeah, I can go through here and just say, look, I, I don't really care about the protocols. They're all 2811, uh, the controller name I want. So I can start deleting these, no problem. Uh, previews, this might be okay, because maybe you have something that you don't have assigned and you're like, well, how come I never see that prop? Well, you don't have it assigned. And so this could be a great way to troubleshoot things that you possibly may need to assign. Default buffers, don't care. In channel numbers, I eh, don't even really care about that. Okay, so I can just I can just delete those, right? Well, I can certainly try. Right click and delete. So just use the stuff that you really need to use. And then I'm just going to delete all this stuff here. Get this to something functional. BOD? Really? Do I need BOD? I don't need BOD. I don't need information on BOD. IP addresses? Yes. Uh, controller? Yeah. Protocols? Uh, maybe. Maybe. You may be running a mixed environment with different types of protocols. So I would argue, yeah, that's going to be important. And then your controller types. Uh, this is a big one. Um, it, shameless plug for my class coming up at Christmas Expo, July 9th, 10th, and 11th, or 10th, 11th, and 12th. Uh, we're going to be doing a hands-on class, and we're going to be digging deep into everything about x lights and we're going to talk a lot about controllers and expansion types, whether it's serial, differential, uh, physical port expansions, to demystify or make it a little more clear how all this works. Uh, there is just a controller, and if I put four receivers onto that controller, those receivers are not controllers, those receivers are extensions of a controller and nothing more. Okay. Anyway, so we will get into that. So it's probably a good idea to understand your controller types. Great, great. So look, I've, I've beat this horse. I've beat this horse. We're going to get out of here because I'm going to show you a tool that I really want you to concentrate on, especially if you are a first-year enthusiast or you're somebody expanding your show, or you've taken some time off from your show, this tool here is going to be really great. And this tool can be helpful whether you have half-baked your show or you have it fully set up. Uh, because when you're designing a show and your show starts to get bigger, you've got to think in your mind, you have to plan, how many controllers might I need What's the distance going to be? Do I need receivers? Do I want to go with what type of strategy? Where are they going to go? And what are the different sections to my show? My show is fairly simple in my mind because I have thirds. I have quadrants, quarters. I have a front yard, left. I have a center section for the garage, a right yard. And so I can divvy these up and then start to think logically, where should controllers be? But you didn't do that when you started. You just started arbitrarily assigning outputs to controllers and now you're trying to make sense where they are and you're over here clicking on the shape shifter uh the shape shifter is on port oh my gosh i forgot to give it a port where well what controller is it on or what about this guy up here oh that's port 17 that's on oh wait, wait hold on they, those guys they told me i should just uh go over here and click on the controller and then go to the visualizer this will tell me everything i need to oh oh boy okay what's all these over here uh, uh mini tree one and stars on port well, okay as, as you can see now i'm bouncing all over the place just give me something that shows me my controller outputs and what controller they're on and number of nodes for that output or number of nodes for uh, every prop that might be on that output because a lot of people may create uh, daisy chains of props. Maybe I'm gonna put 15 stars on one output and I don't realize I did that and they're all on output one and I'm trying to figure out why I'm having problems. So here's a tool that you may never have looked at that you should start looking at pretty quickly. And that is tools, export controller connections. Look, finally, something in the menu that actually does what it says. All right, here we go. 
ah, controller connections. Where do I want to put it? What do I want to call it? Call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine controller connections for now. I'm going to put it on the desktop. And you think, well, it's going to go to the desktop. No, 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 no. It's not that simple. It's going to give you another menu. It's going to ask you, do you want this to report on your, sport, uh, your port start channel? I don't care about that right now, honestly, because I'm using uh, full X lights control. I'm going to use auto layout. I'm using all the auto magic. So why do I care what port start channel it's on? It's not, it's not 2017 anymore. <laughs> Who does that? Don't answer that. You'd be surprised. Port universal start channel. Uh, don't care. Port channel count. Oh yes. Yes. I would like to know how many channels are on that port. No. Do I really care about that? I don't. <laughs> port pixel count. Now that I do. I want to know how many pixels are on any given port of any port any time in my show. Because if I ever see something that shows up with 975 pixels on a port, that is a red flag. And I don't want to wait till I turn on my test mode to find that out. Do I want to care about port current? <laughs> Of course I care about it. Do I trust that this is going to give me real relevant data? It maybe, maybe it'll be close. I don't know, but in holiday lighting, I don't like to guess. So I'm not really worried about port current. If you want to select that just because you dig numbers, then select it. Uh, model description. Uh, yeah, it's probably a good idea to have the name of the bloody model in there. Uh, model start channel. Again, I don't care. Model universe start channel. Don't care. Model channel count. Don't care. Model pixel count. Yeah. Yeah, I care about that. Model current. Again, uh, no. I, uh, yeah. if, again, if you want to put that in there, go ahead. Uh, and you click OK. And this is going to do the same thing. It's going to put a CSV file onto your desktop. Here's my controller connections. You double click on this. And this opens up a sensible window without looking like some schematic for the uh, building diagram of the space shuttle. Uh, this looks a little more easy on the eyes. And this gets you to the point. <clears throat> this is what's great about this. In yellow, it will list the name of the controller and the IP address, as well as the description, which is great. Um, it's going to give you a list of outputs here. This goes all the way to 38 here, and then it goes to serial outputs. This is an F48. So there are 48 total outputs possible on that. And you'll see here on the far left, output uh, port one, you'll see that there are 300 pixels on that port. And that belongs to a King Ransom. And there are three strings, as you can see here, King Ransom one, string one, string two, string three, each with 300 with the balance of that 981 being 381 on port three. I'm okay with that. Uh, I know the distance between my controller and that. I run these at 20%. I'll run 381 on that all day long, every year as I do, and I never have problems with it. Does that mean you won't have problems? I can't answer that for you. I don't know the type of pixels you're using. I don't know uh, the distance. There are a lot of parameters. Be careful when you ask these questions in the groups. Hey, is it safe to run this at that? Maybe. There's the real answer. Maybe. <laughs> might. Might be. Might not. You got to test, folks. And it's easy to test this stuff. You don't even have to have the pixels plugged into the props to test this stuff. Then we get to port 11. There's 220 total nodes and there's nothing daisy chaining. And you can see here on port 13, it's like, oh, what have I got? I have 193 nodes because I'm running my garage left to my garage top to my garage right. And I'm running 43 pixels, 107 and 43. If the pixels don't look right when you're doing your testing, and you come in here and you count 43 and you go out to your garage and you count 44, huh? Bingo. That might just be a problem because chances are you might've taken that left portion of the garage and put that in the vert group. 
in the top in the eaves group and the right in the vertex group and suddenly you've got one pixel off there's a channel count mismatch potentially so this is another great tool you can print this out take this with you into your yard or garden depending on which country you favor and uh, go take care of business again here are more controllers and it gives you the same information all the way through this is very important i could just drag this to my other monitor and I could come back over here to X lights and start looking at things that might be a challenge. Uh, if I see a red flag, then I can basically go over here to my layout and say, well, okay, what's going on with this? Is this really supposed to be on that port? So I can troubleshoot it from here in the layout and, or I could go over to, uh, that controller and look at it in the visualizer and start dragging and dropping, moving things around. X lights gives you a lot of different ways to do the same thing. Get familiar with each. If you favor visualizer, fantastic there. I love visualizer, but there are times it's everything but visualizing because when I'm in there, I cannot see any of my home. Sometimes it's just easier for me to pick a prop and say, look, I want this to be on a particular port. So just be familiar with both. And there are times I will bounce back and forth between the two because they're both very important tools. So get to know your tools and X-Lights. If this is your first year, work on this now. Just go to your tools. Go to your check sequence, get an understanding of what it's reporting on. Look for the big things it's reporting on. I've done other videos on this. You can go search for them in my, in my channel. Uh, the other big one, of course, is the export models, which is going to give you a giant report of everything that's happening in your show. Uh, and it's, it's, it's the truth. What it reports, that's that's sort of what's really going on. And then the one that I really like is this export controller connections. This is a simple report that can help you when you're outside plugging things in or when you're building your show to try to get a, a lay of the land and figure out what goes where. Try not to let X lights overwhelm you. And I know that's asking a lot because it's capable of doing so much. You're going to let this get in your head. You're going to overthink it. Take deep breaths, sit back and take a methodical, practical approach to solving one thing at a time. When you're working at your layout, use the tools as necessary. If everything's working and you don't need the tools, that is great. You are one in a million. I rely on the tools. Our developers have gone through painstaking energy and time to build tool sets for us to use to make it easier for building our shows and troubleshooting. The year you never have to troubleshoot your show is the year you didn't have one. Just remember that. All right, this is Ron. This has been Monday Minutes. I hope this has been helpful. See ya.